In a country like Iceland, where the weather can change from a sunny afternoon to a raging snowstorm within a few minutes, growing anything seems impossible. In Iceland, greenhouses are the main suppliers of vegetables and other growth. And here in the Reykjanes Peninsula, we have a new kind of greenhouse that has charted a course for the future. Um, so tell me, where are we? What is this? Well, we are here located in our greenhouse. This is a really important part of our operation at Orch Genetics. Here we actually are cultivating bioengineered barley plants plants to produce specific proteins. Mm -hmm. So this uh, operation is very important here. Mm -hmm. It's heart of our company. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. So we have known each other for some time now. Mm -hmm. And when we started, there were lots of interesting ideas that you were exploring. So from there to now, wh what has happened and what have you built and uh, what's the, what is exciting in the, in the roadmap? Well, in the beginning, as you know, it was all about uh, develop, uh, developing our technology to yeah. be able to produce these uh, specialty proteins in the barley seed. Mm -hmm. And it took us some time, but once we had the, the uh, technology up and running, it was about uh, what proteins to produce. Right. So we decided early on to focus on so-called growth factors, mm -hmm. mostly human growth factors, mm -hmm. tiny proteins in our body. And uh, so we started uh, producing them in our barley plant, mm -hmm. initially for stem cell research. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it turned out that was a relatively difficult market to penetrate because mm -hmm. of, for a very small bad company in Iceland, right. we were competing with huge uh, yeah. uh, companies, mm -hmm. uh, mostly from US. Yeah. So we decided to look at some uh, <coughs> uh, specific avenue. We knew that these uh, human growth factors were important in the biology of the skin. Mm -hmm. So we just asked ourselves, maybe we could uh, use them in skin care and so forth. And, and uh, we established following that, we established our own skincare brand, Biofect, that has been going really, really well. And that was in 2010. Right. So having the technology there, having those human growth factors, and then uh, moving into the skincare, mm -hmm. uh, anti-aging skincare, uh, business. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, was very important for us in the beginning and, and until now. Yeah. So how big is Bioeffect now? Currently we are in around uh, I believe 25, 27 markets around the world and it has been going quite well uh, and uh, so we have been focusing on, on bringing it into high-end doors uh, and so forth mm -hmm. and uh, have a relatively small portfolio but very active potent products mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, like Bioeffect ETF Serum our, our hero product has for example, won numbers, uh, numbers of different awards, awards around yeah. the world. One of the things that you were talking about was uh, in the pharmacy and uh, you know the, mm -hmm. the pharm pharmacological mm -hmm. applications. Uh, also now, wh what is the progress there? And then what are the other exciting things you're working on? Yes, so we always had this dream of, of, of using our barley system to produce uh, biopharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very difficult, it's very, uh, uh, you need a lot of investment, it's a long, <coughs> it takes a long time and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we have tried to focus on markets and products that we are capable of producing entirely here in Iceland within our company and so on, and bring our product faster to market. And that's, that was the main reason for our skincare mm -hmm. bioeffect. But now also we can see a new opportunity on the horizon uh, using our technology to produce uh, animal growth factors, mm -hmm. not human growth factors, but animal growth factors for a completely new industry that is growing really fast really around fast. the world. Yeah. Yes, like this is kind of like uh, meat without killing any animals. Yeah, this is called uh, cellular agriculture mm -hmm. or cell cultured meat. Mm -hmm. And basically the general idea is to, to collect stem cell Mm -hmm. from the animal of interest, let's say from a cow or a pig or something like that. And you take this stem cell and you multiply it uh, to millions and millions of stem cells in tank. Mm -hmm. And once you have this large number of stem cells, 
you tell those stem cells to become muscle cells, <laughs> fat cells, and so on. Well, that is basically what is making making the meat. Right. And and so this is developing very fast. Yeah. But uh, one of the key factors to this uh, development and of uh, for this new technology is that you have those tiny proteins that can tell those stem cells to die to to multiply and continue to be stem cells and then also a different kinds of tiny proteins to tell those stem cells to become muscle cells or fat cells or whatever mm -hmm. these proteins are the growth factors mm -hmm. animal growth factors and i know there's there's a lot of interest here yeah. primarily because of um, change in climate you know lots of people talking about climate change and mm -hmm. how eating meat is one of the big things that we need to stop yes so so this has always been a dream for for many people mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> that is do you need to kill the animal yeah. to eat it yes and uh, so from ethical point of view if you can just use stem cells mm -hmm. to produce this more or less the same meat it would be unbelievable mm -hmm. you don't need to have uh, uh, cultivate animals to kill them okay. so that's one uh, reason that is driving this movement uh, Secondly, it's the environmental factor, the environmental impact of current or traditional mm -hmm. uh, food or meat production. Mm -hmm. It has many environment, uh, environmental concerns. Mm -hmm. So, but by switching to those stem cells, uh, uh, calculations show that it will reduce so much the pressure on the environment, mm -hmm. on land use, water use, even energy use, right. and carbon dioxide emission and so forth. So it's, it's basically ticking into all those uh, important boxes. Yeah. But of course, all of these take time to build out. <laughs> we, know, we know this and it takes a long time to get it to market. Yes, yeah, it, it will take a long time. And the, the first, uh, the proof of principle was, uh, was the hamburger mm -hmm. from uh, Mosa Meat in 2013. Right. Today, there are so many companies now and they're growing fast. Mm -hmm. mo many of them are very well financed. Right. Um, uh, investors have been pouring money in into this yeah. industry. Yeah. I think it was close to three billion last year, yeah. something like yeah. that. And uh, so we can see that the technology development is very fast. But uh, one, uh, and there are ma many bottlenecks and many issues that they have to solve. But one, one critical issue is to bring down the cost, cost of those of animal growth factors. Exactly. And so we think that we are in a prime position uh, just to really uh, bring down the cost. And we have already brought down the cost of, of the major animal growth factors by. 10 to 20 fold yeah but we we tend to bring down the cost uh, probably five to one 500 to 1000 fold in yeah. a few years yeah uh, thanks you again for taking the time Hello. and uh, very happy to see the development and the growth mm. that uh, that you started a while back well. but uh, as a scientist it must be really really uh, fulfilling to see a lot of those uh, things that we work in the lab to come to fruition and people using them Oh, definitely. I think we are living just a fantastic time now. In Orc Genetics, they have found clever ways to use plants to make misokine, which I think are going to be the foundation for how future proteins are going to be made. So this is all happening in Iceland. I mean, this was a company that started couple of decades back, but now they are in the forefront of transforming how we make food.